introduction. Uh, I will give up some brief ideas about the challenges of Europe and also a little bit about the my fixed study. Uh, I firmly believe that Europe and Sweden is at a crossroad, a crossroad in one way. Uh, we have a development in Europe that uh, greatly concerns me. Uh, we'll go from open and tolerant societies uh, to a different, different tune in integration policy, different tune in migration policy. I did meet with some of the commissioners last week, and I spoke to Cecilia Malmström, the Swedish commissioner, and she's going to have a message on, on integration policy in May. And I, I said that the Swedish government's standpoint on that message is that it, it should focus on, on uh, tolerance, openness, and open, uh, open societies in Europe. And she said, sad enough, 24 countries is coming here and saying the opposite. Uh, you know, it has three countries coming here, and then I said, okay, I can yell a little, little bit more, so you know, it's one country trying to press you the other way. And then you could say, okay, Sweden is, you know, on the moon, we're doing something totally different, different that is wrong, if 24 countries is doing something else. But I'm very much convinced uh, that it's a dangerous path for Europe to go if we close our countries, uh, if getting less tolerance, uh, and that's for several reasons. One reason is obvious, is that we have a um, uh, responsibility to, be solidar uh, to show solidarity to people that are refugees. We also have the, the, the moral obligation, uh, both under, under international laws, laws, but also as human beings. The people that have had the luck to be born in, in Sweden or other rich countries have an obligation uh, to, have open, uh, to open the doors to people that, that need to have protection because they are, are, are in, in severe situations. Secondly, if you, you know, if you don't care about solidarity, it's a very unsuccessful road to walk, to close your borders more in a globalized world. Uh, open and tolerant societies, every lesson from history, history says that, especially small countries such as Sweden, that are dependent on, on commerce with other countries, that are dependent on people coming in, that are dependent on new, new ideas, we are successful when we are open to other countries. We are very seldom successful when we close our borders. Uh, a Europe that wants to be the most competitive economy in, in the world needs to be open. To believe that we could compete with uh, India, China, Brazil, uh, Brasilia, uh, all these countries that now are, are having a tremendously interesting development uh, without openness, I think it's a wrong path to go. And one third brief remark uh, before I go into my place is that we are getting old, older. You know, it's a demographic challenge to, to phrase it another way. We're getting older in Sweden, we're getting older in Spain, we're getting older in Portugal. Uh, when the first uh, Swedish retirement society, uh, system was introduced in Sweden, uh, we had a uh, retirement age of 67 and uh, middle. Uh, middle, uh, average, uh, the average time, time we died was 58. It's quite cheap retirement system. You know. To be totally honest, you know, it, it, you had some 70 years old, 75 years old people living in Sweden at that time. Uh, we had a huge infant mortality, but anyhow, people didn't really, you know, wasn't uh, benefit from retirement so, uh, for such a, so, so many years. People tend to start tend to start to work at, at 12 years old. Today we start to turn, turn to work at 25 years old. Uh, today we have a, a retirement sy system that in practical we have a retirement age around 60. And we live until around 80. That creates a challenge. We are not so many people that are going to support the people that are going to be supported. And also here integration and migration policies are crucial. Uh, the Swedish standpoints are that successful integration together with li labor migration could be two of the, uh, uh, two of the keys to solve uh, the demographic challenge. Going on, <coughs> to give some brief remarks concerning MIPEX. MIPEX is an important tool. Uh, we're measuring formal rights over time within a country and between countries. I would dare uh, to draw some conclusions from the MIPEX 3. One conclusion is that European framework matters. If you see on, on the indicators uh, where we have a European framework, uh, we also have better results all over Europe. Another, for a politician, positive thing is that political will matters. 
the countries that could see positive results, such as Portugal, uh, Portugal, you have had a political will uh, that, that explains, I, I believe, uh, better results concerning integration. Another conclusion, of course, being a Swede, is that Sweden is top ranked. Uh, I'm very happy about it. Uh, we have high, sc high scores for labor market, policies concerning labor market, integration, and education. And that's, that's crucial uh, for successful integration. It did get some attention in Swedish media, and I did get, give some interviews. And one of the interviews did have an article with, with a headline saying that Sweden is best in integration, Olin Hag is discontent and away. <laughs> uh, why? And, okay, I'm very happy about the, the, the top ranked. Uh, but it is, we, we have to be honest with that, it's on the former grounds, it's not the outcome of, of integration. Um, we have challenges in Sweden. Sometimes we, I'm asked, have we been successful in integration policy in Sweden or not? Uh, yes and no. We have 600,000 people in Sweden. In Sweden quite a small country, that did go to work today that was born abroad. Paying taxes in Sweden, going back to the demographic challenge, without them we shouldn't have any chance to, to have a welfare society standing today. We have 80,000 people gave, that went to their enterprises, their own companies, where they also give jobs to others. At the same time, we have people that haven't entered the labor market. It takes seven to eight years since you are granted a permit, if you are a refugee, to come into the labor market. We have kids going to the pharmacies today with a mother helping her with the Swedish because she didn't get Swedish. So we have huge challenges and, and that's the, the explanation for why I was a little discontent uh, even when I commented on the MITEC study. Uh, we are focusing now on employment, we are focusing on language skills and we should also be honest to say we also have a discrimination challenge to face. Uh, immigrants as a whole but especially in certain groups. We have more tolerance in Sweden today than we did have 20 years ago, actually. Uh, tolerance concerning immigration and migration. Uh, we speak from Red Cross Manus that mentioned that we, now, oh, we are liberating the migration policy in Sweden. To go back to Cecilia Malmström, she, said, she told me when she didn't need a commission, and she said, okay, now Sweden has decided to be a little bit more liberal in migration laws, People looked at her and said, oh, are you on the moon, or what's happening in that country? I think it's the right, right, right path to go. But at the same time, when we have a tolerant, ways to tolerant, tolerant Sweden, we have challenges concerning the Roma group, we have challenges concerning anti-Semitism, we have, have challenges concerning Islamophobia, that tends to be a little bit higher today than 20 years ago. So we also have challenges concerning discrimination. Finally, I will say something about what happened in Sweden on the 1st of December last year. We have a new Introduction Act on place. I'm trying to find the correct term in Swedish, in English, I know it's Swedish. The Introduction Act, the introduction act for newly arrived migrants uh, went into force the 1st of December uh, last year. The key stones of that, that reform is that the Swedish Public Empowerment Service will have a coordinating responsibility for introduction activities. Is that important? I think it's crucial. Because we had a system where a newly arrived immigrant did meet the social services. And that creates a situation where you ask, when you tend to meet people as weak people, instead of meeting people, what could you contribute to? Uh, and that's a quite a uh, 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 big change actually in the Swedish system. We have an individual uh, introduction in Sweden, we have a plan for everyone that, that's part of the new introduction act. We have also a new benefit that it's the same all over Sweden for people that participate in language skills training or in job preparation and are participating in the plan. That is individual and that is crucial because we have a challenge also with the gender gap with the foreign, uh, people born abroad. That I, I mentioned it took take seven to eight years from a resident permit in Sweden if you're a refugee. If you, uh, if you compare between male and women, uh, you have five years for men, nine years for women. One of the explanations, I believe, is that we have had, a, have, have had a collective systems and collective benefits for the families. And what's happened then is that the man is going out first on the introduction and then the woman is coming the world, uh, some years later. Uh, so we're trying to do something here. Uh, it's, it's not going to solve all the problems. It's not going to solve all the challenges. 
But we have a policy focusing on job, focusing on language skills that I think the right path to go. Uh, finally, I hope that the day today will, will uh, be a day where you also discuss outcomes, where we have a public responsibility to use my text to learn from each other. I sincerely welcome the competition from Finland. Uh, I should be a little bit... Um, I'm not so, so afraid of saying anything. I'm a little bit worried about the outcome of the Finnish, Finnish election in two weeks. Uh, so I, I actually think that if the minister you met is going to be still in government, we're going to be in a situation where Finland can compete. But we can also have a, a sad development that train can. If we, if we are succeed, successful in Sweden and other countries concerning Europe uh, and openness, that's going to be one of the things that is going to make us comp competitive. Think about it. Small countries such as Sweden, we are, we think, believe we are in the center. We're not really in the center. Mm -hmm. There are people that think it's a bit to Sweden. Uh, we have a language that hardly no one speaks. Uh, we are a small country that are dependent on selling our goods and, and important things to Sweden. What's happening now in Africa, in the Middle East, is fantastic for that region. It is also a great opportunity for Sweden. I firmly believe that the Mullah regime in Iran, Iran as well will fall. What happened then? We have 70,000 people in Sweden with a background in Iran that can be a bridge to a new market with possibilities that are huge. And that, that's the key message which I'm trying to, to, to point out in Brussels, with the commissioners, uh, in the council, because if Sweden is going to be successful, if Europe is going to be successful uh, in the long run, we have to stand up and, uh, and tolerant. We have member states in my books, such as Canada and the United States of America. I wish them good luck, but should we compete with them? We need to, to ask Canada, for example, Stand, uh, continue to be open, otherwise we have a very dangerous path forward. Thank you very much.